the uh, <coughs> field of knee replacement has not, uh, in terms of the prosthesis, hasn't changed dramatically. The big strides forward were about 20 years ago with the, what's called the total condylar design. And um, we've already talked about, you've already talked about knee arthritis and what it is, but basically it's loss of the cartilage that covers the bone. So the bone becomes exposed and then patients are looking at whether they need surgery or not. There's a lot of variation in uh, the symptoms of knee replacement and the severity and how much people tolerate. Some people will have a knee replacement early in the progression of that arthritis because they don't tolerate the symptoms. Some people will go to an extreme point where they've gone actually probably too far and the knee is deformed, significantly deformed, contracted. And then the recovery is slower. We have to do more work in the soft tissues to balance the ligaments because knee replacement is not just putting in the implants. That's only half the procedure. The other half is balancing the ligaments around the knee so that one's not too tight or too loose, which then leads to uh, problems with the soft tissues, can lead to failure of the implant, either loosening or wear of the plastic. It can lead to continued pain in the knee because one ligament is too tight or too loose. And that's the hard thing to teach <coughs> to people because it's more of an experience thing. You can't put a device on. We've tried devices to quantify the tension in the ligaments and they just don't really work. We don't have the technology to do that at this time. So it becomes an experience thing and a feel thing on, based on the surgeon's experience over years. And I'm still learning about it after doing it 3,500 knee replacements. We learn all the time and change what we're doing. Part of the etiology of the arthritis you find as you do these things, a knee that's not particularly deformed may be tight posteromedially after you put the implants in. And you have to release posteromedial structures to balance it out. That probably is why the knee wore out to begin with. That some, you know, just anatomically, some people's knees are built differently. Ligament may contract or be tight all along and over the course of time leads to wear in the back of the knee or the outside or the inside and deformity. And that has to be addressed when you do the knee replacement or it can make things uh, not function properly. There's not too much different in the non-operative management, supplements, uh, lubricant injections, cortisone. Uh, maybe the uh, Eastern uh, religious philosophies will learn, tell us more about self-healing <coughs> as that gets investigated, but um, we haven't figured that one out yet. But <coughs> There are some things that have gone on in the last years in terms of uh, technique of knee replacement, and that's probably been the biggest advance, those are the biggest advances. There's minimally invasive muscle sparing approaches. It, it's, it's a little hard to visualize how you're going to get in there without cutting something as you look at this. But basically, we have to get in over here. And the traditional approach is to come up along and cut the, along the edge of the tendon where the VMO comes into the tendon. And that leads to more weakening of the quadriceps muscle. So you can come in in this plane here and just slide the whole quadriceps mechanism over. And that leads to a faster walking recovery. Most people, you, you may have noticed, you know, uh, the way I do it, most people are walking without a cane in 10 days or so. And, you know, somebody with a more extensive approach may take six weeks to really walk without a cane because there's less damage to the muscle. It's a little harder for the surgeon, especially in somebody who's big. And actually probably harder for the second assistant who has to hold the <laughs> muscle and the patella out of the way while we do the procedure. But it can be done, and I've been doing it for a long time, but it hasn't necessarily caught on uh, like uh, wildfire around the country because it is more difficult and they're comfortable with the old ways they've been doing it. <coughs> there are navigation techniques with the computer which we're using. They don't necessarily uh, significantly improve the alignment but they are safer for the patient because the old system we would put a rod up the femur and set the alignment off the axis of the femur 
with little blocks. Some people would put the rod down the tibia as well because they thought it was more accurate. When you do that, it brings fat out of the marrow. It goes into the open trabeculae in the bone and into the bloodstream. The lungs have to filter that out, and it can cause pulmonary issues post-op. And if people have an atrial septal defect, that fatty material can cross to the left side of the heart and go to the brain, and then they get confusion and uh, delirium afterwards. And, and those, so those issues are significant. And by doing navigation, you can eliminate the need for that in primary knee replacement. <clears throat> the pinless navigation system uses a bunch of little uh, infrared trackers and a camera and a computer. It has algorithms that try to tell you that you're in line with the center of the hip, center of knee, center of ankle, because that's really what we're trying to accomplish, is center of hip, center of knee, center of ankle, so that your knee joint, the implant, we want parallel to the floor. So people say, well, my knee's not straight. Well, the normal knee's in a little bit of valgus, a little bit of knock kneedness. So that's what we try to get. But it can vary depending on the offset of the hip joint. So it's not a perfect technique, but it works pretty well. And there's a computer algorithm that tries to find the center of the hip with these systems, and they work pretty well. So I looked at 100 total knees with my old system with the rods and 100 total knees with the new system. And uh, here's a patient that had one of each. The uh, pinless navigation is the one with the little zero up there. Uh, basically, the results are pretty comparable. There may be a few uh, fewer outliers who are a little bit off of their mechanical axis, but overall it was pretty much the same. But I think the patient safety issue was the biggest thing. Actually, I'm going to go backwards here. So <clears throat> the other things that have, have changed is the way we manage the pain after total knee replacement. And we're using nerve blocks, femoral nerve blocks that stay in for uh, two days, allow the front part of the knee and the quad to be a little relaxed and the front part of the knee to be uh, less painful, allows them to get going a little earlier. It slows the walking because the quad's weaker, but it speeds up the bending and it's more comfortable. They have less pain. We've also gone to a uh, multimodality pain management which uses uh, like Tylenol, Celebrex, Neurontin, a variety of other meds before surgery to try and block different pain pathways before they get activated. And it seems to s dramatically reduce the um, amount of pain that people have post-op and reduces the uh, use of narcotics. And people generally feel a little, uh, feel a little better and they're, they're able to get up and get going a little faster. That all of this is speeding the recovery and trying to get people out of the hospital faster. And it, and it, is, uh, it is working, though, and the people are moving a good bit faster. There have been changes in knee revision. That's why I said we were doing Monday afternoon into late into the evening. Um, we can build, I don't know if you can see through this plexiglass, but we can build you a custom total knee in the, on the back table. Karen and I were doing that while the winds were picking up. If you can see through this model, the, the normal knee doesn't have stems that go up. It's a short stem on the tibia, but there's nothing going up the femur. With the new ones, we can add a stem that goes up the center of the femur, put sleeves on it. We can put wedges in here to, to make up for bone loss. Same thing on the tibia. We can build up the central part of the tibia and put a longer stem down. And we bolt all that together and torque it and pound it and so that it's all like cold welded together and then we can cement it in place. Because when people's knees get, go bad, they sometimes get a lot of bone loss and you have to deal with that. You can't just put a new primary knee in there. You have to supplement. And a lot of times that bone loss is such that you can't bone graft it, like in the case on Monday huge metal wear, the, the metal of the old knee had actually worn right through the plate as the guy had let it go on too long. So in the old days of total knee replacement, they said wait as long as you can. 
before you have it done. We don't say that anymore. You do the things you want to do, and when you can't do them anymore, we fix it. Because if you wait too long, it takes a lot more to get it fixed. And this fellow on Monday was a perfect case of that because he had extreme metallosis. The tissues were all black stained, and there were big holes in the bone. And you know, it's hard to deal with that stuff. But uh, it looked good when we were done, and he's he's doing fine. But it it complicates the whole thing. So. Um, that's really where we are. That, I, I didn't talk about uni compartmentals. Uh, they haven't really changed much. They've been around for years. Um, people will do them, and then they'll find that they're revising the uni compartmental in a few years. And if we'd done a total knee, you wouldn't be revising it. Then the design changes. People start doing them again, find the same thing, quit. And the design changes. It's the same thing with surface replacement in the hip. And um, the, the forces in the uni compartmental are very high, and the components are small, and so they tend to loosen. The other side of the joint can wear out. So it's not the greatest operation. With a modern, uh, properly managed pain management, minimally invasive total knee, the recovery is not that much different. And you have a knee that 95% are going to last 25 years or more. So they can't say that about uni compartmentals. So it's a question where the role for that is right now. Thank you.